And we're back. Welcome back, everyone. This is Color Frequency episode seven, I think. I hope you've all been fantastically well. Let's get into it, shall we? Right. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm not sure where we left off last last session. Uh, also, I've forgotten how to throw the ball. Oh, there we go. It's R. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the things. What are we supposed to be doing? Answer the call. Okay. Hey, Big Shot. Hit the button. Okay, take Peggy. The call. I'm getting there. All right. Just relax. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Boris Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. Yeah, that seems a little bit, uh... Uh... A little bit insensitive. Uh... You want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course now! It's his birthday! I won't have a chance to do it again until next year! May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. Oh my he's god, if he's as pepper Ronnie. pepperoni. Is this... His first name's Peter. Peroni. This is the name. pizza guy. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Fox always called him... Pepper. Yeah, of course. Thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god, damn it! <laughs> yes! Tell her we can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's oh Pizza. God. Starting a chat. You son of a bitch, stop calling us. Damn it, Peggy, this is your fault. Why is my it fault? Peggy's fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. Ugh. <sighs> Don't worry. We've already got another caller on okay. the line. Just A real pick one? it up, okay? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. Oh my god. Caller. It's Ponty. <sighs> oh no, it's the teenagers. Ponty. Oh my god! Pizza always delivers! Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll Hang be there! <laughs> I think Ponty's the killer. Forrest? Forrest? Are you okay? Forrest? I hope. The whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus Ooh, that Forrest? Was a bit far. Sorry, sorry, that was. That was yeah, too that much. It's okay. Bit. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. There's Ponty. Folks, don't spend your money at Ponty's Pizza. That's. All I'm gonna say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Oh, uh, was this the one that was flirting with me? Uh, I bet I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. Oh There's yeah. A lot going on. But she's please... very sus. This one. I never she's very that sus. Now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Please, Don, if you know something, if you know who the next target is... Oh, it's too late for that now. I'll be the judge of that. Oh, fine. Chuck Brody was the next target, but that ship sailed. Who was Chuck Brody? How did Brody? you know it was Chuck? Well, if I tell you, I might just put more people in danger. People are already in danger. This might help. Force, I don't have time. I need your help. Do you mean... Yes. He's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. No, she's so sus, Dawn. Right. Okay. 
tell us everything. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. So I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Okay, newfangled security system. Uh... Well, it's not going to be solved by a simple key, Forest. Come on, let's ask a neighbor. Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. Okay, okay. That code, code. inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Mm, Shit. Dog. I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. Mm, the dog Boy, can I help. Wish he'd muscle that thing and oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This David Scopo. Do we have that? Oh, we do. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh... Can you get your neighbor's attention? That the whistling man will see me for Wait, where's the whistling? That. Well, I didn't know he was there. What's your neighbor's name? I don't know my neighbors. Remember, please. I need to get in. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Okay. Uh, Starling. Let's see what we can do. Come on, Thank Peggy, you, you've got Forrest. some ideas. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her <laughs> As you do. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Oh, yeah, Peggy hates Dawn. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well... Tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who, but to help someone. I've got one of these in my flat. This little guy, just like him. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments and somewhere Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Yeah. Okay. So let's go find some papers. What does it say? Search the info first video so I wouldn't sign apartments. Okay, I kind of tuned out a little bit and I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be going. Um because I'm not very good at concentrating. Was this here before? Ah, <gasps> cheese. Not getting in there tonight. All right. Hmm. Let's go back to the office. Things are usually in the office, aren't they? Okay. Starlight four thousand. No. Oh, you got free garlic bread. I had pizza for tea last night. It was delicious. And I had garlic bread. It was also delicious. Um, okay. I guess it wasn't in here we were meant to be looking. It was probably down in the basement again, wasn't it? Security system, can we go up here maybe? Nope. Down in the creepy basement. Oh yeah, that was that girl's desk, the intern. 
Cats? Yeah, cats are still there. Let's go ahead and put that in the trash. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can we get in here? We could if I... Oh, I don't remember this room. Did we come in this room last time? Oh, yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, I remember the... I remember the... Arcade machine. God, there's loads of rat traps about. Okay, well, I don't think we're going to find information on the security system in there. I don't want to go out there. Yet. Can't go there. Can't go in there. Can't go in there. Okay. So... Down? Basement? Oh. oh. Why am I... Why am I failing so hard? This has got to be where the security stuff is, right? In the drawers? That's where I'd keep it. You got nothing in your drawers. What's the... Oh my god. You got nothing in your cupboards either. Okay, that door's having a freak out. Sir? Sir? Oh, whatever. Delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. The system's not even installed at Woodside. Oh yeah, look. How do I? Oh yeah, there we go. Unable to install. Require new parts. New installation date the seventeenth. Woodside Apartments. So it's order number one zero three three. Okay. Ah, and apparently we opted for manual installation. Oh, yeah, because this guy. Whoa, 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 relax. Because this guy was putting it in. Ah, oh, here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Put this down. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come mm -hmm. in handy. Very good. Uh, do we need that one? Let's bring it just in case. Probably end up having to come all the way back down here again. Also, I can't remember if you can run in this game. I don't appear to be able to. Uh, this way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Right. Hello, Peggy. We're back. Uh, let's put this one here. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Patching you through. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Peggy. You're a doll. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Mm. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay. If you say so. Line one. Whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Stream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Oh, wait. We want to deactivate first. 
surely. The code is 811220. Thank you, Forrest. Oh, she sounded so. Oh shit. Oh my god, what's happening? Forrest, what did we do? What did we do? I'm so lost. No! <gasps> Why is Dawn evil? I don't understand. Who is she? What okay, so we happen. saved Ricky. We saved Ricky. I got the achievement for it. We we didn't save the dog. I didn't even know. I I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> every time, I never know what I'm doing in this game. So the whistling man is a yeah, woman. Dawn. Well, no, it's too early to know, isn't it? Surely. I had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. <laughs> All right, Peggy. Stop calling she called me up. Out. You spoke to her multiple times. Uh, yeah. I thought she was just regular just a weird local. Strange. Really, Forrest? Why do you think she requested that song? I don't know. get me outside maybe but how she didn't know the song was outside to start with that's right she never actually attacked me out there so what now I guess I should make an announcement we do have new info okay kill the music and you can make the announcement okay okay you're live in three two hey folks this is Forrest Nash here I hope you're all safely locked inside for those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. Uh, when they just look out for each other and stay safe. Hmm. Mm, no, nah, look, come on. We're neighbors. Look Let's out be for chill. each other. Stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. Don't trust anyone called Dawn. Uh, it could be a fake name. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. <laughs> Good one, Forrest. Hopefully, first. our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. Hold on, let me just tidy up my table of used clues. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please oh. help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's He's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help Holy me. Holy poop. Uh, okay. Just tell me about it. Somebody's been stabbed. Can, can you tell me what happened? We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all mm. of a sudden. Sure. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. 
I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed Holy. him. Holy! Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. It's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! Mm. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance! Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason! Jason Parker! Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach! And then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground. In his it... leg? Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. She wouldn't leave the knife behind. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <laughs> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh god, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... well, you know. I know, but please, we need something, or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? Yeah, that sounds great. Hit me. I'm sure we can handle it. Okay. I'm first aid trained. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. You taking notes, Peggy? Apply pressure. Jeez. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. Okay. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't. Yeah, take that's it right. Out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding yeah. right now. If anything, you they always do that in the films. They always yank I wouldn't it out. I have thought of that. It makes sense, it's though. That's not what you want to do. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. My partner gets very irate when she sees someone do that in a film. Uh, keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Okay. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. It's not That's that much information for us. Right Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized, and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on Hi. line one. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Casey. I'm here. How are you doing? I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell! Should I pull it out? Absolutely not. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. 
Tested. Yeah, that's probably a good no, idea. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Peggy, Jason you're so through nice. this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Uh. She did say secure it, didn't she? I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer. Some cloths Wait, on the Wait, I thought you were a reservoir. What else? I guess I've got my jacket. The laundry. It's clean. The laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to buy you some new whites, Jason. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on. What could you know possibly want now, Peggy? You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. Peggy, what the heck, bruh? What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Um. She can. She, she, she can drive. Surely. There. I know she doesn't know. Oh how to no, drive. she doesn't know how to drive. Okay. We may not have a choice. Forrest, that's a terrible idea. Never mind hurting that is Jason. Not a great idea. She might I get didn't herself she or someone go. else killed. Don't suppose you have any ideas then? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, <laughs> never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. Oh, map. The map. And the since map. I the missed map. the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. <sighs> could you call Where that an I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Yeah. Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is oh something else. Oh my god, else. Peggy. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the <laughs> hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these <laughs> futuristic things that have information mm -hmm. on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. All I right. Just have to look around. Which one was Reggie's office, though? There isn't more to do. Game. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Okay. Thanks, Peggy. Um, she said down to the office, so I guess it's downstairs. 
We're going downstairs. Back to the creepy ba Why are these everywhere? Uh, no, that's the staff room. Oh, no, this one. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking for a note. Looks like I Hint. need a very important code. date. Okay, so what's an important date for him? Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post it notes. Mm -hmm. Evan and Louise's wedding, alien sightings. <laughs> okay. 18, 18, 10, 85, it could be, or it could be the date of their wedding. Wait, what was it? I already, I literally already forgot. 18, 10, 85. Let's check, let's just see if, if that works. 18, 10, 85. Oh, it's four digits. 18, 10, 85. No. What about 10? Wait, no, I did that wrong. What about 10, 85? No. Nope, that's not working. Okay. Let's do something else. Ali acts forever. Need to write a pitch document. Good title. Bring back original protag and villain. Okay. No, that doesn't help me, I don't think. Ask Ginny where those tapes are, it's been weeks overdue. Oh, here's a floppy disk. Could this be it? Oh, it's like Fallout. Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter, free slice on me. <laughs> Jesus. Takes place on 11th of the 7th. Very important date for the town. Okay, here we go. Nice. Nailed it. All right, personnel file. Which one are we looking for? Oh, it doesn't say. Okay. How do I take this out? Get out. God! Why was that so loud? What the f... Bradley Carter. Uh, people said it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Take it out. You can't be afraid to explore the dark streets of unknown. That's an... Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. I didn't realise she was so interested in Brad's work. Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of our first date. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, so Brad and Barbara are a no-go. No. Peggy, I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for okay. a while. Okay, we know what? Peggy can't what do it, so... My file? Yes. You need to find someone who can help Not worry about that. We already know I can't. Don't yeah, okay, down. Peggy, chill. Right. I'm sorry. I, need I didn't know it was yours. Candidates. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone oh, it's me. Type. Forrest, what are you doing? We don't have time for <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Okay. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I really should Barbara's be really getting on with all the stuff here. Everybody really gave her great feedback. We're in a hurry. Oh, some double audio there. Uh, Barbara got another cat recently. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for a new horoscope. I don't care what she thinks. Uh, so, uh, okay. That's all absolutely inconsequential information. Useless. K 
Karen has really stepped up her duties in recent months. She's fully taken on Hamish's show alongside the Timberland twins. Hopefully she doesn't get any ideas about being paid double. <laughs> of course. Karen has started monitoring Peggy. I think she'll be really good for Peggy. They're even doing team building training getaways. Oh no, this is this is Peggy's friend who's also useless. Okay, so it's gonna be this one. And if it's not, I've screwed up somewhere. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, John has a bunch of medical equipment in his home. Let me pick your yeah, speak to John. Yeah, 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 it's John. It's John. It's John. I don't think I need that. John. John, 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 John. Okay, Peggy. 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 Hello? Bruh. I've already worked out the safe combination. Peggy, talk to me, please. Why is it, why is this, what's the problem? It thinks I haven't, I haven't done the safe, but I've done the safe. God, to go all the way down here again. Look, I've done the safe. Game. Please. Maybe I have to stay on this a bit longer. Okay, so he didn't actually do the first aid kit, but he is first aid trained because he was a medic. Well, that's not changed anything. Oh, what about this one? Hey, Peggy, you there? Oh. Yeah, I'm here. So you Can won't you talk to me when I'm literally up there. Oh. Flipping heck. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Oh. Is anybody oh, there? God. I thought Please that was Peggy that? shouting for help there. Casey, I'm here. Holy What's crap. wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up He's everywhere. He's in shock. What's happening? What do I do? He's in shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seemed to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, Casey calm you're down. so you've done annoying. Right. I, I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate his legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to get his those knees organs. up. Got it. Jason, stay with me. I I'm just going to move you. This might hurt. Okay. I propped his legs up on some boxes. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. I'll wrap him in some blankets. Just give me a second. Mm. Uh, uh. Sorry, sorry. Jason's bleeding through his bandages. Sh should I get him new ones? Or... Oh, no, God. no new ones. Just put more ones. More bandages. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of him. You still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so... I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. That's very big of you, Casey. I'll fix his bandage. And get him warm. Hold on, please. <gasps> sorry, sorry. I'm done. You're gonna be okay, Jason. Just relax now, okay? Sorry. I'm scared. He's not doing well. Is he? Is he gonna? 
He's gonna be fine. Be strong. Casey. You have to make him calm. For Jason. Sit with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. That's what you gotta do. Okay. Okay. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who John. Is it? We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person mm -hmm, we have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really? I never really spoke to him before. Oh, well, what? Peggy, you should really get to know yeah, your co workers. According to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. We're doxing Call John live on YouTube right now. Who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Leave me a note like everybody else. Uh, a man has been stabbed by the whistling Never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I. Oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Guys, he's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent? Was Reginald an option? From what we I were can't told, remember. He has two major stab wounds, one to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my Let's watch. go, John. Thank you, John. We'll let him know That's what we way. needed. Oh, I feel so safe Hello, with John. Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be here. Yes. Do you hear that, Jason? Colleague John, coming. the hero. that the show moves on we're sending our best wishes to jason yeah i hope jason survives i guess we'll find out well after all that excitement i think we could use some music uh, come back upstairs when you're ready all right and with all that excitement i think we end the episode there guys we've saved two people but we did well, actually, I don't know if it was fully confirmed that that guy's dog died because he was like, oh, I'm coming. So he sh uh, the dog might still be alive. I really hope they are. Um, but yeah, we saved two people this episode. So that's really good. That's better than the last couple of episodes where I think we killed most of them. Uh, but let's not worry about that. Um, yes, please do join me on the next one, guys. And in the meantime, have a lovely morning, afternoon, evening and take care of yourself and be well. And uh, yes, okay. Love you. Goodbye.